Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my mini art talks. I'm Janet Mandel. Today is August 17th, and it is my 45th wedding anniversary. So I thought I would discuss a, an appropriate painting. Now, I did the Arnolfini marriage a few weeks ago, so I went to the Rijksmuseum to find another perfect painting, and that was The Jewish Bride. Oh no, wait a second, not that Jewish bride, but this one by Rembrandt, painted in about 1665 to 1669. And it is a very beloved painting, also beloved not only by viewers like us, but also by artists. Two of those were Chaim Soutin, who supposedly took the, um, train from Paris to Amsterdam and would just sit in front of this painting for hours. And also Vincent van Gogh, who supposedly was reduced to tears in front of this painting. And he wrote to his brother Theo, he said, I would gladly give up 10 years of my life to sit in front of the painting for two weeks, eating only a stale crust of bread. Now, what do we have here? We have a woman who is uh, dressed in this very luxurious red dress and her neck and her uh, wrists are, are draped in, in gems and pearls. And standing next to her is a man and he is equally richly dressed and he has this pleated garment over a shirt with wonderful shades of gold and brown. Now the fingers of her left hand are gently resting on his, which are gently resting on her breast. And I see this as a reciprocal protective gesture. These two figures, uh, despite their obvious intimacy here, they're not looking at each other and they're not looking out at us, the viewer. They're completely alone in this moment. And they're set uh, in front of an arch here and a potted plant, but you barely notice that in the background because you're so taken by these amazing uh, two figures. Now this work was done in uh, the last years of Rembrandt's life. And in fact, that his last decade really was one that yielded many, many of his most complex and psychologically nuanced uh, works. And uh, paintings from this period are uh, done it with, with very uh, thinly applied paint, is in the background, and very, very thick, richly applied paint, as we're going to see here. There are very, very heavy slashes of paint creating the textures of the folds in the woman's dress, and very smaller, more delicate highlights of white and gold that uh, pick out the um, uh, gems uh, and the gold of, on her rings and, and in, in her bracelets. And um, this is almost a sculptural quality of paint, this very, very thick impasto that is also evident in the man's clothing as well. And uh, he, he, his are a little different though. If you notice, they're kind of like these very square uh, brush strokes, and they are uh, highlight uh, his uh, this very voluminous right sleeve that Rembrandt creates, and they look almost like mosaics that create this very shimmering gold texture. And it may be this very thick impasto that he, that Rembrandt uses on these clothes that may be what attracted Soutin and Van Gogh so much because they painted with that very very thick application of paint as well that we know. Now, the um, Jewish Bride is probably not the painting's original title, and it seems to have really been added sometime in the 19th century. And the identities of the subjects, either the, the people who commissioned this painting or who was supposedly being portrayed, is also a mystery and has engendered a lot of debate over the years. And at one point, it was even thought that this was Rembrandt's son, Titus, and his, his wife. But it's now almost totally uh, uh, commonly, I should say, accepted that the identification of these two figures are the biblical couple, Isaac and Rebecca. And the story of this couple comes from the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. And Isaac and Rebecca were seeking refuge in the lands of a king called Abimelech. And Isaac was afraid that the locals might kill him to try to kidnap Rebecca because she was so beautiful. So he claimed that Rebecca was his sister, not his wife. Now, I don't know how that was supposed to protect her, but... 
that's how the story goes. Anyway, they were caught in this moment of intimacy, as you see here, by the king, and that revealed their true relationship. And he was very angry because they had deceived him, but he also understood why, and then he commanded that no one harm them. So therefore, Isaac and Rebecca become the model married couple. She's modest and beautiful, and he's faithful and steadfast and strong and protective. Now, an earlier drawing by Rembrandt, which was done in about 1662 and is in the United States in a private collection. Now, this shows the same couple here, and we know that because Isaac has the same kind of protective gesture, and, and Rebecca is also touching his hand as well. But this uh, drawing adds something else. It adds this, the spying king is here, and you can see him in the upper right-hand corner of the image. Now, um, what happens though when, you, so you see the king there spying on them, at, but you see when you, by Rembrandt leaving the king out of the uh, uh, painting, is that now we become the spying figure. We are the ones that are spying on this very, very intimate scene, and that blurries the boundary between painting and life. And that's really what great art is supposed to be all about, I think. Now, one more uh, very interesting theory about this painting is that it was intended as what was called an historiated portrait. And that was where um, wealthy people who could afford to commission a painting of themselves would dress up. And they would either dress up as biblical figures to show how virtuous and pious they were, or they'd, they'd dress up as um, mythological figures to show that they had the qualities of the gods and the goddesses. So perhaps that's um, what these people were doing as well. And we don't know for sure, again, but these kind of historiated portraits existed very comfortably between, uh, uh, alongside of what we think of when we think of a Dutch portraits, which is of stern people dressed in black or carrying out uh, everyday activities to show who they were. But um, this may well be one of those historiated um, portraits. But, um, but we don't know. Uh, we, we really don't know what, um, uh, what it is. It's, it's a mystery. But by choosing to depict uh, Isaac and Rebecca, perhaps the sitters were choosing to emphasize that they had a wonderful marriage, that they were faithful, that they were pious and that um, uh, this marriage uh, should be celebrated, which is one of the reasons why I decided uh, to pick it. But regardless of the veracity of any of these interpretations, this painting is really such a great example of the aging Rembrandt at his finest. And so I wanna say happy anniversary to me and to my wonderful husband. And we are going to go to a Yankee game this afternoon and then we'll go out to a fancy restaurant for dinner and then we're going to see a Broadway play in the evening. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, we're not. It's August 2020, and we will probably just do some Netflix and then watch the opening of the Democratic National Convention, which opens tonight on television. But it's, that's a good way to celebrate our anniversary as well. So thank you for joining me. And um, I hope, uh, and, and thank you for uh, helping to celebrate my anniversary with me. I hope you'll come back to my mini art talks again. And remember that if you are on Facebook, you can join my art talks page there. And then I also upload these to um, YouTube. And I really hope that you subscribe by clicking that red button and then hitting the bell next to it so you get notifications of when I upload a new one. And then I am on Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. And then I'll have the full schedule of my um, longer uh, art talks that I do uh, for libraries and adult schools and community centers and things like that. I have a few more in August, and then I'll have a full schedule in um, uh, the fall. And the I'll put the schedule up and a little, little blurb about what each talk is about on my uh, website. You don't have to memorize that URL. Just go to Google and put in Art Talks with Janet and look for this, um, my logo, and you'll get there. So again, thanks for joining me, and come back again soon, and I hope if you have something to celebrate, uh, that you'll do that too, and even though we're, we're living in, in these times, but please um, stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.